um, I'm pretty fascinated by. So one is podcast apps are doing quite well. Like we're in Riverside now. We've funded, I'm invested in Squadcast, which is a competitor yeah, of Riverside. Yeah. Um, and we then, used, uh, both of them. We're using Riverside now. We use Squadcast. We use Zencaster. We Zencaster. Use every- I was with them before. Yeah, with Squadcast. And then, of course, podcast hosting. Right? There's Castos and Lib- Lib- Libsyn and and others. And we use that. Podca- I think even podcast editing, like Alit. I we use. I use Audacity, and then my editor uses Adobe something or other. But like Alitu, A L I T U, is podcast editing in the browser. So like the stack's starting to get there. We have disparate tools to do things. But when HubSpot launched, so I, so I know Darmesh, right? Darmesh and I were bloggers and speakers. We met at BOS in 2008 or something. So I remember when HubSpot launched. And I remember thinking, but all of these things exist. Like in early days, HubSpot was like, it was like a, a blog, I think, plus a marketing website, plus Google Analytics, plus I don't remember what it's like something an email else. capture form or something. something like that. It was very simple, but I was like, I could, but I remember saying Darmesh, but I could build that, you know, with MailChimp plus WordPress, you know, I'd, and he's like, yeah, but business owners don't want to do that. They want to bundle. And he was right. I, I think, and he was right. I said, they're public and where you guys are you know, an amazing company. I think of the same thing with podcast production where I right now, I mean, I've been running a podcast for 11 years and I have, you know, people helping me with it. And I literally am in notion dragging this thing over here and then sending an e- that sends an email to my producer to do something that we then log into Castos to upload. You know what I mean? It's like, where's the hub spot for that? Where's the so bundling of I, the I, podcast stack? I have a strong opinion. I have two strong opinions. The first is I'm almost certain. No, I'm partially certain that for the most part, podcasting software and podcasting tools is a horrible business because a few reasons. Very few podcasts are successful and most all of them are broke. <laughs> here's my, here's the counterpoint to this Great. because I, I would like to be I am otherwise. an investor so I see the numbers, all right? Um Squadcast doing several million a year in revenue and they're not doing it on the fly fishing podcast. Think of the three avatars for a, a podcast. There, there is the hobbyist, my Dungeons and Dragons podcast, my fly fishing, and they're gonna, they're broke, and they're gonna pay nine bucks a month, right? And they're gonna churn like crazy because they're gonna they're start. Gonna churn, it's yeah. too much work. All right. Then there's the next tier up, which is startup for the rest of us. I'd say my first million is in that where it's like a single show. But if I go to pay a hundred dollars a month for Squadcast Riverside hundred dollars a month for hosting. It's not a big deal to me, right? And I don't think it is to you. There, so it's not nine dollars, but for you, it's like a hundred. I think if I were to say, "Oh, my first month should pay five hundred dollars a month for each of these," you start to feel like ah, I'm not sure that's worth it. But there's a number there, okay? So there's a, and they, and we don't churn. I mean, I've been doing it for twelve years. You guys have been doing it for several. It's like the 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 S and B of of podcasts. Yes. It's the S and B that actually sticks around. There's hobbyists. There's S and B. Then there's one level up. So there's iHeartRadio. There's ESPN's podcast. There's the Kevin Smith podcasts, Smodcast, right? There is Kara Swisher has a whole network, Gimlet Media, NPR. Like once they, especially once they went remote, that's the enterprise. But how many of those are there? Because for example, like Vox, I think Vox was trying to sell their CM. Like it's all media companies are like, oh, we built this proprietary technology to like get our articles shared better and like things like that. And like, cool, I would love that technology. But they want to go out, like Washington Post is doing this. They want to go out and sell their software. And I'm like, how many fucking media companies could pay a hundred grand a year for software? Most media companies are broke. And so that's my same thing to podcasters. But all right, I agree. Those exist. I want to be, I need to be convinced that there's like enough of them. Ben was well, going to say just, something. We should let him yeah, talk. <laughs> uh, I, I was blown away. So we got a pitch from one of these recording companies, one of the ones that Rob mentioned, I won't say which, but I assumed that the pro tier that Rob was talking about would be like 10x what a normal plan was. And it was like 100x. It was like, it was like plus a month for um, a month, a month, a month for, so for some of these pro features. Yeah. And what? um the squad I, I was blown away. I could not believe it. I was blown away. But anyways, you know, it's worth it for for a lot of people. So I, I, anyway, well, for that type of company, you don't need that many customers, I think is is maybe the point. Really? Do you get crazy amounts of features with dollars a month? 
I mean, they're cool. They are cool features. They're cool features. Wow. That is crazy. That does sound high, I will admit. That's crazy. But that's where you don't need that. You don't need that many. Okay, so podcasting is, is, you're saying it's a good business because there's actually enough customers to, to make it work, right? Yeah, yeah. And podcasting has this other thing that I, that is, I think, undervalued or just not talked about enough. It's this concept of a dual funnel or a split funnel where you have, you know, who else has this is um, electronic signature. E-signature has this, where you have this super wide funnel. There's either free users or very inexpensive users on the low end. And so a lot of people use it. Thus you build a brand and you just have 5,000, 10,000 customers, whatever. Uh, some are just users, some are customers. You also, if you have any type of viral loop, that's amazing, right? You send the link to Squadcast or Riverside. You send a link to get a document signed. Oh, a little bit of virality. But then on the top end with e-signature, similarly, you have realty mortgage brokers who I need 8,000 documents a month signed. And suddenly that's at 10, 20, 30 grand a month. That dual funnel is incredible because when you, if you're just enterprise, then you're enterprise, right? And it's like Oracle in the old days. It's like, all right, so we need to close 500 deals this whole year, but each deal is a million or 2 million bucks, right? I mean, that's it's like these massive deals. And it's just this grind of enterprise sales. But when you have the low end funnel and the high end funnel, it's um, it feeds on itself and it helps you have a more stable business. The companies that are able to... Ch- 